All right, what is going on guys? So I have been talking about Go and backend development for a while, but I have yet to really go over which framework I use and why. There are a variety of different options these days from Mux to Jin to Fiber to just rolling your own custom HTTP server using the built-in HTTP packages. But the one that I always use and the one that's become by far my favorite is Fiber. So I wanna break down Fiber, show you why I use it and some pretty absurd benchmarks that make it, in my opinion, the clear choice for any new uh, backend project you're starting in Go. I think that the best place to start is gonna be in just an example of a basic hello world in all of the different frameworks that I mentioned earlier. So the first one is gonna be Fiverr. So this is my favorite, as I've said, and the syntax is extremely similar to Express. And they actually say in their documentation, it's an Express inspired framework, which personally I like because I come from a background of Next.js and Express and Node and all that stuff. I know a lot of people don't like the Node ecosystem as much, but personally I find it very intuitive and I really like this way of setting up my router, setting up my root, setting up my middleware. It, if it works in Express, the general concept will still work here, uh, which I think is pretty great. Then we have Mux. So Mux has a similar syntax. It's a little different because we don't have to pass in get, we use handle func instead. So you then have to declare what method you're using elsewhere. And then the way you send stuff back is a little different. It's w.write and then you're sending back a byte array instead of sending just having a send string or send JSON or whatever. Um, a little less intuitive, but still very easy to set up and very, um, very easy to use, very easy to work with. Um, then we have Jin. Jin is by far the most popular of all the things I'm gonna to mention today. And this also has that sort of an express inspired framework of the router dot some method and then you pass in the root and then you pass in the handler function. So very similar there, the C Jin context and the C fiber context, very similar to each other. So the two are very comparable. The big place where they sort of break apart is in the middlewares and well, they don't break apart in the fact that you can implement middlewares, but they break apart in the fact that um, Fiber has a lot of really great just pre-implemented middlewares for you that make your life really easy. Jin does as well, but I like the way Fiber does it better personally. And then we get into just the basic server, which is just http.handle function and then passing all this stuff in. If you notice, Mux is very, very similar to this because Mux is a pretty light abstraction on all on the basic HTTP um, package, and then you're setting this up, then you listen in server 3000. So you can build out a full API. So th this does not use any packages or import anything, and it will, you can build a full API this way, but personally, I wouldn't recommend it. A lot of the features and niceties that you get from these frameworks are really just not worth passing up, especially with how absurd Fiber's performance can get. So the first thing you'll see when we get into the documentation, this is very subjective and is not a reason to pick a framework or a language over another, but I do like their documentation a lot. It's very nice, but again, not a reason to pick it. It's just a nice bonus that it has. And in the Fiber world, one of the most interesting things we can take a look at is their benchmarks. Okay, so when we're looking at the, the when we look at this benchmark page, you can see that the performance difference that you get, well, first of all, this top number up here, this 6 million requests per second with a latency of 2 milliseconds versus 367,000 for 351 milliseconds. That is Fiber versus Express. That is Go versus TypeScript or JavaScript. Go is a much, much, much more performant language than TypeScript. It is not even close. Now, that's not to say that TypeScript is bad or you shouldn't be using it for backend development. It scales really well with serverless. It's extremely easy to write, extremely fast to write and it integrates really well with the front ends these sort of meta frameworks of next.js and remix and nux and all this those are phenomenal ways to build apps i'm not dogging on those or anything but when you need heavy performance and very heavy um compute on your server particularly when concurrency is involved fiber and go absolutely the way to go we have fiber and then the fiber pre fork at around six million and then all the way down here we have gin all the way down at six hundred thousand. so in all of these benchmarks you're going to notice that fiber absolutely blows gin out of the water and as you'll see from all these different benchmarkings fiber is insanely fast way faster than basically any other framework and that's because it's built on top of fast http which is one of the fastest ways to execute http um, calls and go so makes the framework really fast. It still maintains a really nice uh, writability and readability by being express inspired and using a lot of these nice design patterns that most of us are familiar with. So then getting into another thing that this has going for it, and I think that is the built-in middleware. If you look at this tab on their documentation, you can see we have basic auth, cache, compress, et cetera, et cetera. 
These are all built-in middlewares that that fiber will provide for you. And it covers a lot of common use cases you're going to run into. And it's going to make your life a lot easier when you need to go in and actually implement this stuff. So for example, if you need to deal with cores, which most people will, it just has this built-in. So similar to Express, Express, you can just add the cores package. This, it's actually built-in. It just has this built-in middleware of cores and you just have to make sure that your app is using it. Or and then like another good example is like a rate limiter. You don't want people to be able to spam your server into the ground. So you can put this guy on here and then just limiter.new will prevent spamming. It'll prevent DDoSs. It's great. It makes, um, this is often something that's really a pain to implement, but Fiverr just does it for you. So there's a lot of different things in here. I won't go through all of them, but you get the sort of idea that these built-in middlewares are just excellent. And then implementing your own custom middlewares, is just as easy as it would be in Express or any other framework or language. It just feels really natural and easy. Yeah, the way they handle routing is really nice. It's exactly how you would expect it to work. Grouping works how you'd expect it to work. And then sort of the last thing that I kind of want to go over in the docs is like these hooks that you can do. So what these hooks are is they're basically just functions that will execute every time a certain condition or event is met. So like, for example, with the hooks, what we're doing here is we're setting the name of this root to be index. And then what it'll do is it'll go here and we have two hooks to find. One of these will take in the, they'll be executed in order, as you can see down here. So this first one is just going to take in the name because since we have this fiber root and we have a name for it, we can pass in the name here, read name is this, and that'll print out this first part of this line right here. And then the second hook will fire, which will also be called on name. And then that will just pass in the method and it'll print out method of whatever. So add user method get, and then that's a nice logging solution, or you could do some um, side effect logic or however you want to handle it. It's a nice feature to have. And there are tons of other hooks on here on fork, on list and on shutdown, et cetera, et cetera. So that's sort of the general gist of it. It's not the most in-depth thing, but it kind of just comes down to fiber is the fastest. It's got the most elegant syntax, in my opinion. It's very similar to express, very easy to work with, very comfortable. If you've ever done any backend development before, you'll feel right at home within minutes. And yeah, 